QuickBooks 6, Hourly Payroll and Payroll Liabilities. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and phone number, and we're on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. I'm going to jump over to Excel, and I'm continuing the document I started last time. And what I'm doing here in Excel and in journal entries is what you would normally see if you have an automated payroll system and you're letting your accountant fill out the paperwork for payroll. First thing we need to look at is the employee center because if you want to look at activity for each employee we have the employee center. So if I jump over there, if I go to employee center which is the button at the top of the page, I see Keith Hernandez and Kenny Reitz, my two employees. There's an edit employee button where I filled out that basic information that you can change if you need to. And I can see that there's no payroll posted here yet. But this is the screen where you can go to change something about an employee. And then there's another tab here that talks about paychecks, liability checks. And when your system is automated, which I will get to on videos down the road here, I will automate the process. But I wanted at a basic level to start off looking at a spreadsheet and journal entries to explain how the payroll works. So I wanted to mention that employee center. If you recall from earlier videos, there were um, various things besides just a paycheck that were going on. We had a 401k, which is an, which is a, an employee retirement plan. 3% of gross payroll was going to be withheld for that. Federal income tax. Social Security and Medicare, and in fact, I'm going to get rid of the federal unemployment because I don't deal with that in this example. State income tax, and I'm going to get rid of state unemployment tax because that's not in this example either. So I'm going to delete that row. What I emphasized last time, and I have it here in bold italics, for an employer, most of these amounts, these amounts, in fact, all of them, get passed through to someone else, and that's what we're going to see in journal entries here in a minute. So when you get your payroll, your automated payroll posted, if you were to go into QuickBooks, here's what you're going to see. So Kenny Reitz, this employee, had wages of 125, which is five hours times $25 an hour. That's going to be a debit because that's an expense. Then we had all the withholdings because you see there's a big difference between the actual expense, the gross payroll that Kenny Reitz got, and the cash that he actually gets in his pocket. And if you all work and get paid payroll, you're going to see this happening. So we withheld 3% for his 401k contribution. These numbers are just estimates. These percentages are just estimates based on 2011 rates of withholding and estimates that I made. So I ballparked it and I said, let's assume 20% federal income tax withholding, not looking at an income tax chart, that's $25. Let's assume the 4.2% Social Security. Now that is the employee share, employee share of Social Security, which is not an expense to the company. In fact, none of these are expenses to the company. The share of Medicare, again, this is the employee share, 1.45% is what the employee, the worker, pays into Medicare. And I said, let's assume a 5% state income tax withholding, not looking at tax tables. So if I add up the wages in blue and I subtract all the withholdings in green, I end up with cash to Kenny Reitz of 82.92. And I did the same thing with the second employee, Keith Fernandez. So if I jump over to get out of the employee center and I go to company make journal entries and I'm going to go back to journal entries. Here is my activity Okay. Here is my activity for Kenny Reitz. This is the same information that you saw. Now, I'm going to make note of one thing. I fill out the memo section for every line. That way, when I go into my financials, 
Every single line item will have an explanation by it, and it is a lot easier to track down and clear up, track down problems and clear up confusion if you fill out every memo line of every entry. We, here's his gross payroll. Here's all of his withholdings. We wrote a check for AD 294, and that's journal entry number five. If I look at journal entry number six, I made the same entries for Keith Hernandez. Gross pay, 125, all the withholdings, net pay, the check I wrote, out of checking, 8294. As I've mentioned several times, the next step, liability payments, is all these withholdings that we saw here, all of these numbers, have to be sent to somewhere. The 401k contribution for both people, Both employees goes to Mountaintop Investments that handles the 401k, so we write a check. Federal income tax, both employees. We write a check to the U.S. Treasury. So the employee's share, the worker share of Social Security, both employees. And the Medicare share of both employees, the 181. That is going to be sent to the U.S. Treasury using Form 941, which is your quarterly and sometimes more frequent filings of Social Security. We've got finally state income tax. If I click on this cell, it's the sum of the withholdings for both employees. That gets sent, since we're in Missouri, to Missouri Department of Revenue. So, these entries, let me emphasize again, are not expenses. We didn't post to any expense accounts. The last entry that we'll see, these are, I've titled, Other Payroll Expense Payments for both employees, and this is the journal entry for those payments. The employer's share of Social Security, I'm going to sum up the gross wages for both employees, 125, 125, and blue and green. I'm going to multiply it by 6.2%. That's the employer's expense for Social Security, for having employees. Medicare, I take gross wages for both employees, 125, blue, 125, green. I multiply it by 1.45%. That is the expense to the business that is the employer share of Medicaid. And then if I add them together, I get my journal entry. And my explanation is employer share of Social Security and Medicare to the U.S. Treasury. And again, we're going to use Form 941 to send that in. Let's jump over to the seventh journal entry. I'm in the journal entry, make journal entry window. I'm going to hit next, previous. Previous, previous, here we go, entry 7. So here's the 401k contribution going to Mountaintop. Federal income tax is going to the Treasury. Social Security and Medicare employee share going to Treasury using Form 941. State tax going to Missouri Department of Revenue. So all the ones down to the 1250, these are all just pass-throughs, money that we collect and pass through, no expenses. And then finally we have the payroll expense for Social Security and Medicare going to, also going to Social Security and Medicare using the same form 941, but the 1963 is an expense. Let's see what happened with our financials. I'm going to go to Profit and Loss Detail. And if I go down to the Payroll, the Expense section, I'm going to see an expense The, the split, I would ignore the split here because that does not really applicable. We're going to see Medicare payroll expense there. Social Security payroll expense there. Only two expenses to the company. Ignore the split, because I didn't use that field. We won't keep the report. 
if I go to the balance sheet, company financial balance sheet detail, here are all the checks going out. Again, if we look in the memo section for, let me expand it a bit more, the mountaintop investments, U.S. Treasury for the federal tax, Social Security and Medicare, state tax, Social Security and Medicare, the employers portion. And then if I go down to liabilities, under payroll liabilities, I see that there were um, liabilities set up for the payroll. And if I expand my field here to the end of the month and refresh, and I go down the liabilities, I see that the liability was set up, the payments were made, the account zero. Liability set up, payments made, zero balance, Medicare withheld. Liability, payments made, I'm off by a cent. Social Security, liability set up, payments made, I'm off by a penny. State income tax, liability set up, Payments made, zero liability. So other than that one cent error, I don't have any remaining liabilities. They're all zeroed out because I made all the payments. So my payroll liabilities in total equals zero. That's as far as we're going to get on QuickBooks 6 for weekly live chats on critical accounting topics, including QuickBooks. You can go to the continuing continuous classroom page on our website where we schedule usually once a month small live chat sessions including QuickBooks. Our YouTube channel Ken Boyd STL all one word. You'll find a, a link, a YouTube link to a complete list of videos on our website. It's updated periodically. For one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is our homepage. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.